implementing a public relations plan. Maybe sit down with your university relations or external affairs group, or, or on your own, or with um, you know the group that's put this summit together, um, and and start developing and start getting more proactive with public relations. Because if you're not out there telling your story, somebody else is, and they're not using your words. They're not using the spokespeople that you'd like them to use. They're not using the research that makes sense, that you want to talk about, that you want to use to convince people to change their behavior. So if you're not doing it, somebody else may be out there you know, doing the same thing um, that will not be good for you in the end. So public relations is a really important um, you know, part of what you want to do. But like I said, no guarantees. But that third party endorsement is really critical. Uh, because when a news writer or a TV reporter, um, you know, comes down and you've got your key message points together and can deliver those key messages with some of the supporting facts and the public sees it, um, you, basically the newspaper or the TV station is saying, um, you know, we agree with, with Cliff. What he said is right. You should too. Uh, so it's back to that third party, that endorsement from other people. Um, sometimes you've got to be willing to share the message. Um, you know, you're not always going to be, you're usually not going to be the only source uh, for a story. Uh, sometimes you may have corporate um, input. Sometimes you may have government input. Sometimes you're going to have faculty, maybe your extension field officers and people like that. So be ready to share that story. And don't freak out if the journalist says, well, is there somebody else I can talk to? That's part of the public relations process. And again, you'd rather be included and direct the story um, you know, by being involved with it than not participating with it and saying, nope, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm not going to tell you anybody else because they'll go out and what will they do? They'll find somebody that's willing to talk that may not you know, have the same beliefs and the same background that you do. Uh, and then there's also a big chance for misunderstanding if you're not involved in the story. Uh, because, you know, I would hope that most of the people in here consider themselves experts or somewhat experts in their field. You should be the one that's working with the media. You should be the one working with your university PR departments to tell the story. And at the same time, you should probably be the one coming up with some of the story ideas. It's probably not in any of your job descriptions, is it? Does anybody have story development uh, you know, as part of your job description? <laughs> but again, if you're not doing it, nobody is. Who's doing creating the ideas, creating the public relations opportunities uh, you know, to talk about our water, our world, or to talk about some of the other issues um, that are out there? So public relations is a strategic communications process. It helps manage, protect, and enhance your reputation. It's not really designed specifically to sell things, which you know, advertising largely is designed to sell things. Public relations is a strategic process to help manage, protect, and enhance your reputation. That gets back to one of the issues we heard a lot about a little earlier, trust. What, do that, what does that do? That builds your trust. It builds your credibility with the media, with the marketplace, then your message is more easily accepted. And if you've got to get it out there six times, uh, you better have that trust um, and understanding behind you. Um, it also uses the words of others to create goodwill. And this is where we talk about sharing the stories. Um, your press release could be your press release, but then it becomes our story. I said their story here, but it's our story of uh, water quality and the importance of water quality and integrated pest management um, and things like that. Your talking points become the newspaper's editorial points. And we'll talk a little bit about this later, but just think about when you do um, an interview. Most of the time in the field that you guys are involved in, the reporters are not going to be very knowledgeable. They're looking to you for information, or they're trying to do what? They're trying to figure out something to sensationalize. Um, because, you know, the nice story, the good story doesn't really sell newspapers, it doesn't draw a TV audience. 
So they're out to find the, the worst case scenario, um, you know, the, the worst example about anything uh, to do the story. But if you have your key message points together that you have been repeating over and over and over everywhere you go, the first thing you're going to say is, you know, a healthy lawn's a good lawn. And then you're going to support it, regardless of what their story is. Because think of an interview. Um, it's not an interview. It's a speech, and it's your speech. They've asked you to talk about a specific topic. They've given you the opportunity to address a concern that they have because they want to do a story. Rather than sitting back and just responding to their stories, sit down. First you want to do is ask the reporter, what do you want to talk about? So you can get some idea of the direction they're going to take. But then write out your key message points, and then write out your supporting documents and practice. So when the reporter gets you on the phone, or gets you to sit down with them or in front of the camera, you have an opportunity to do a speech in sound bites many times. Um, but they're your comments, they're your words, they're your sound bites. And you actually can take the control away from the reporter um, to tell your story. And I don't mean to put it as it's, it's not a combative kind of situation in many cases with a smaller newspaper or a newspaper that you know kind of is on your side to begin with. But what I'm trying to say is that it is your opportunity to craft the story, to basically create your advertisement, um, but through the media, through uh, a news release. And again, down here, your awareness campaign for groundwater issues becomes their understanding of those issues. So when they come back to you six months later, or when something else that's similar comes up, um, you've established that trust, and people are more likely to, to want to deal with you. So public relations can build awareness if you do it enough. It's not the kind of thing that you can send out one press release. You have to constantly be looking for ideas uh, for you to approach the media with your story. You have to constantly be ready to repeat your key messages. When the media comes to you because they're doing a story, you want to set up yourself as, a, as an expert, uh, so to speak, so you're the person that they come to when there is a story. Uh, you want to reinforce and further the reputation of your company and its products. Again, trust. It's all about trust, building trust. Um, your goal, though, is to educate the target audience, the publics out there, to your message. And to do that, it's got to be clear, it's got to be concise, it's got to be to the point. You can't sit down and ramble on and on and on about how nitrogen and phosphorus interact with each other at the very beginning of the interview. You can get to that, but your key message you know, has to be something simple. Um, our water, our world. I mean, that's not so much of a key message, but it's a, you know, it's a great tagline. Um, and in an interview with the reporter, that's the first thing you said. You know, we're concerned about our water uh, because it affects the world in which we live. In. And that becomes your, your key message point. <laughs> um, it increases the understanding out there. This is a field where there's a lot of uh, I don't know that it's bad information out there, but how many times have you guys talked to a reporter and picked up the story and it's totally wrong? Has that happened to anybody in here? <laughs> Ever? Well, you know, think about why did that happen? Um, it's probably because, you know, you, you're not public relations professionals and you're not thinking that, well, okay, this reporter has called me and they want to know about a, you know, a, a fertilizer application. Um, you pick up the phone, they tell you who they are, and you immediately go into feedback. You give them all the feedback that they're asking for. You haven't stopped to ask them what their story is about. You haven't stopped to, um, to think about what your key message is and to write down your key message points. So that's one of the main reasons I believe that the media screws things up so often. It's because they come in with a preconceived notion a preconceived story, and they write that story. 